Hey everyone, Jacob Norris here, Pure Polygons. Uh, some of you may have seen my work before in the marketplace under the Pure Polygons tag, the company. Uh, I'm actually part of a, a new company now called Sierra Division that I co-founded, and we have a team of people working on all these packs. So you can expect uh, a lot of really cool stuff coming in the future, some great customer support, and some really high quality art coming from the whole team. Uh, I wanted to quickly just give you a bit of an overview of how all these packs are going to be organized in terms of the file structure, the texture, naming convention, and just the general setup of what you can expect when you download a pack and start to open it up and dive into it. So all of the content that you'll find is going to be under the SD Art folder. This stands for Sierra Division Art. And we did it this way so that whenever you download a pack from us, you'll be able to find whatever the pack name is, as well as some of our default materials and textures uh, in the parent folders here that you'll be able to share amongst the different projects. So in this one, I'm using the oil rig as a reference. And you'll see, as I mentioned, this SD materials here. So we did it this way uh, as a parent folder outside of the project so that way as we continue to update and add new features to all these master materials that we have set up they will propagate to all of the instances and material instances you have in your other projects as well so as we continue to release new content uh, all of the new content will be sharing these same master materials that will keep updating then the same goes for the textures that we have here these are just some of the default textures that we use for blends and like uh, when we're going to be using the vertex painting or some of our simple default material textures uh, like virtual textures, normal maps, linear color, uh, and white and black maps that we share across our master materials. The different naming conventions for the type of materials that we have, if we go ahead and open up our default master here, this is going to be less important to you as I'm sure a lot of the times when you're going to be working with our materials uh, you'll actually just create a material instance and assign your textures to those but if you do decide to open up the main texture source uh, you'll see that we've left a couple comments just some simple information for you to follow along with and understand how these materials are built so we have a material instance as well of the default master so if I open this up You'll see we have quite a few different features and options here to work with. I'm going to go over another video where I actually break all this information down and properly detail out what each feature is, how to use it, and how it relates to the content in the pack. Because that's quite a bit of information. I mostly just wanted to cover our overview of the setup for this. When we have an asset or a blueprint or any of our actual project files if we come into our oil rig folder here you'll see that there's an assets folder blueprints maps materials textures and this specific project actually has water effects as well so in the textures folder in this parent folder here these are going to be shared materials specifically for this project so if we open that up you'll see there's things like trim sheets uh, shared signs ocean textures and HDRIs for this project. Uh, the same goes for materials. These are going to be materials that are shared across different assets that we have inside of our pack like decals, different types of metals, floors, uh, the signs that I mentioned, trims and things like that. If we come into our assets folder here you'll see this is where we're going to have all of our different one-off assets, our modular assets and things like foliage as well. Opening up one of these assets, if we open up the AC unit here, the way we've decided to set it up is that the content and assets are directly in the main folder for that asset. And then we have the materials that go along with them. These are all material instances based off of that master material I showed you earlier. You can always check the reference viewer by right clicking it and see everything that this uh, material is assigned to. And you'll recognize all of those AC unit files that we have right here in our assets folder. Inside of the textures folder here, then you'll also find the related textures that go along with those materials assigned to this. And our naming convention is albedo for diffuse or color maps, uh, normal for your normal information, and then we are using what's called an ORM map. 
So ORM, if we come into our view here of the texture and break down the different channels, the red channel is going to be occlusion, so that's the O. The green channel is going to be roughness, that's the R. And the blue channel is going to be metallic, so then that's, uh, that's the M. And so in our materials for this, if we open up the AC unit main, you'll see there's a couple switches. And just for a simple overview, you make sure to activate anything you want to use from that ORM map. Uh, as well as activating the ORM map itself. If you uncheck that, then you'll notice we have our standard metalness maps and our standard roughness maps if you prefer to use those instead of ORMs. For some of the other things that we have in here, you'll notice that we also have a blueprints folder. And so these blueprints are going to be referencing some of the files from the assets folder here. We don't have the assets specifically inside of the Blueprints folder. We wanted to keep this nice and organized. And so only the Blueprints, uh, the files themselves, are going to be in this folder. And I'll cover the Blueprints and how those operate and the different things we have for the oil rig in another video also. In the Maps folder here, these main maps are going to be the ones you'll actually open to work with. This is the asset library that we're currently in right now, where you can see an overview of all of the assets that are in the scene, as well as some information about setting up a few of the new features like the, the water and the buoyancy and making sure that your projects are ready to incorporate all these new files from this project. Uh, then we have actually two main maps here. You'll see oil rig cinematic and oil rig optimized. So depending on how you want to render this scene the optimized one is going to be much better for showing off things in real time and being able to play with it and run around and use it for your games and such it's really only just changing some of the lighting features and some of the effects and some of the settings that are actually in the level to be able to render it faster and make it more usable in a real-time space the oil rig cinematic version is where I've taken a lot of the screenshots. It has the ray tracing activated. We're using some more lighting effects and post-process effects that are a bit heavier on the machine. But it's great if you want to render cinematics or high quality images for whatever project is you're doing. And then the sublevels folder contains any of the sublevels that we're referencing inside of our main levels here. So like our oil rig cinematic actually has a standard lighting level and our optimized oil rig has a, an optimized lighting level. And so these make it really easy when you load up these main maps. You can just load and unload any of those sublevels to quickly iterate on how you're rendering things in your scene. If you are looking to use some of the decals for the scene, if you come into this shared materials folder, you'll notice that we have the whole decal settings and all of the uh, decals that are going to be in the project here in one folder. Uh, those don't relate to any specific assets. They're just ready to be placed anywhere in the world that you want. And so they're here in the shared materials for, folder for you to grab. It's super easy. Just click, drag, and drop, and you can place decals anywhere in the scene. You won't really find much to use in the textures folder here, besides, as I mentioned, the HDRIs, maybe something you're going to be dragging in uh, and replacing this background sky with if you end up using any of the HDRIs that we've provided. Otherwise, I'm sure there's a, a lot of really awesome sky tools and other things you may already have in your project that you can just continue to use, and they'll work perfectly fine with these assets. And the last folder here, as I mentioned, is the water effects. And so these contain all kinds of files specifically for the water, the motion, the buoyancy, uh, the effects that we actually have. There's going to be a couple effects like some, some bubbles and debris that work really well with motion blur. And it just creates some beautiful imagery that I'm sure you saw in our trailer for the pack. So that's a general overview of what you'll find when you open up our assets, the general folder structure for how these things are laid out, and the textures that we're using for the set. One other thing I do want to mention is some of our assets actually use what's called uh, virtual textures, which you'll need to be sure is enabled for this project to work. If I open up 
one of our files here that actually uses those virtual textures, you'll see that right next to the texture or on top of it overlaid is a little small VT. That just means virtual texture and what that does is it allows it to pack more information into a single file uh, and it stops the processing uh, from having to render multiple passes on an asset that uses a virtual texture. So there's a lot of videos you can watch if you want a more in-depth explanation, but it's essentially UDIMs for our assets. So if we have like um, a virtual texture assigned here, we're using UDIMs, which helps reduce the number of draw calls by reducing the number of materials we need to assign to an asset by having these virtual textures. It's a really cool feature and we've implemented it on this pack and hope to continue to do so on the future packs. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment in the YouTube video or feel free to reach out to us. You can find our support page at www.crdivision.com slash support and we'll be sure to continue to update that with new videos as we create new content or update any of our folder structures and settings. Really hope you enjoy all the work we're doing and can't wait to show you some of the really cool stuff we have coming in the future. Thanks so much everyone.